Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Data Standard Podcast Experience. I'm here today with Tom Doyle, the SVP of Data Science at Medi Data Solutions. And today we're going to be speaking about the topic of just working with clinical trial software in uh, medical data. So welcome to the show, Tom. I'm very excited to have you today. Thanks, Catherine. Great to be here. Yeah. And could you just go ahead and tell our audience more about your background and maybe what led you to your role today? Sure. So I've spent about 20 years at the intersection of life sciences, technology, and analytics, bringing a variety of solutions to some of the biggest uh, challenges that we've had in healthcare. Uh, I've spent a big part of my career in major sponsors or uh, life sciences innovators, um, working internally, whether that's in helping in clinical research uh, or in supply chain and other parts of their business to really try to accelerate essentially bringing new treatments to patients. Over the last three years, I've been with Metadata, uh, where my team is really responsible for uh, the data fabric, the, the data that, plow, that powers really clinical research, both across the Metadata platform and for all of the sponsors within our ecosystem, uh, as well as partners and new players that are entering the space that are really all about trying to find you know, better outcomes for patients. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And it's great to see how artificial intelligence can really be used in many different fields, especially in the healthcare field, such as um, in your position as well. And so let's jump into that as well. So I wanted to just start it off with um, just asking you more about the artificial intelligence side and um, how is that really being used at Metadata for the clinical research uh, purposes? Yeah, you know, there's three main areas or pillars, essentially, where um, we are really in investing in and trying to, to move along. I think the first that everyone sort of gravitates towards and thinks about is really around like new insights, new innovations. You know, how are we using AI and, and data to essentially find new treatments for patients, to build better experiences for patients? But there's two other areas where we've seen a lot of traction and made a lot of advancement. Uh, the first is, is in the automation of a lot of processes. In the evidence uh, generation business, like clinical development, uh, there are a lot of manual cur curation steps and data cleaning steps. And through AI-based technology, we're able to automate those. And why that's important is it, it takes error out of the process, but it also can help dramatically accelerate uh, clinical development, which is the other main area where, where we've seen really a lot of interest is simply how can we use, you know, new patterns, new technologies, AI, new analytics to simply go faster. Um, and this is especially relevant in uh, an era of COVID where, you know, we did not want to wait years for new treatments and, and uh, essentially vaccines, uh, but rather we wanted to make better decisions much faster and identify ways that ultimately we could get to better solutions for patients. And some of the old models of working simply wouldn't have got us there. And so AI is introduced to essentially help us better design studies, re reduce patient burden, uh, make better decisions, and ultimately take a lot of the time-consuming steps out of, out of clinical research. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I'm glad that you also brought up the topic of COVID-19, since that has really affected everybody around the world in the past maybe year and a half to two years or so. And um, just from your perspective, how have you really seen artificial intelligence or technology really impact the, really the COVID-19 um, situation? Yeah, I mean, certainly we, we continue to live in very unprecedented times that have uh, essentially pushed us to, you know, advance new technologies and introduce new thinking to, like I was saying, to go much faster than we have previously. You know, we are in a business and uh, where getting it right is of paramount importance, but getting it right quickly is definitely important as we look to treat quite literally billions of people around the world. Uh, this was an opportunity for us to essentially challenge all part of clinical development to find ways to do better. Um, that was not the effort of any one company, um, any, one, any one practitioner, but rather big collaborations uh, between metadata and my team, for example, and our customers and medical innovators who really were looking to, uh, to bring treatments to patients who, who, 
who, who very much needed them. Um, AI was a, a certainly a uh, an accelerator of that. It allowed us to make good decisions about you know where we would enroll patients. It allowed us to make better decisions about how we would design studies that would prove safety and efficacy um, of treatments or uh, or of vaccines. It allowed us to take out uh, a lot of manual steps. You can imagine in 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 studies the size of some of these vaccine vaccine trials. You know you're talking about a fairly large data set. Um, that doing manual data cleaning and quality checking simply is not feasible. And so rather we were able to introduce new AI-based technologies to identify potential quality issues and really center people around you know, what, where they needed to focus their attention in order to get to quality submission and to really understand um, what was happening within the disease so that we can ultimately get to where we are today. And um, I'm great. I'm glad that you talked a lot about the COVID-19 um, situation with how advancements in technology has re have really helped with this. And so another area that I wanted to discuss is also just the devices in the healthcare industry and how they really input and take in data. So what can you really tell us about sensors and wearables? Yeah, this is an area where I personally am and really excited about, you know, our goal in, uh, in, in clinical research has always been to understand as much as we can uh, and build a richer picture of a patient and that patient's experience, disease progression, ultimately working our way towards, uh, you know, the age of precision medicine. What devices allow us to do is get us to a place where we are getting very rich data set very rich data, I should say, not just within uh, the trial site, not just when the patient is interacting with the investigator, but also when they leave, when they're at home, when they're in their daily, daily life, we now have an ability to engage with that patient and continue to see how they are really progress progressing. So are they having a better experience on treatment than they would have if they were not? But the other thing that it allows, it allows us to engage patients in a very different way. You know, it's not like a, a traditional go see a, a physician and they run a battery of tests, but rather it's something that is far less intrusive and yet provides you a wealth of data. And one of the things that metadata is committed to is that patient data return is really engaging patients in their own experience by making their data available to them helping them really to, to guide their own journey. This is super important for the advancement, not just of medicine and clinical research, but even well beyond that. And I think that's something that devices and device data allows. The other piece though, is that it opens entirely new opportunities around digital biomarker discovery. So essentially how can we use devices to give us early signal about uh, disease progression, for example, or even the existence of disease within, within a patient, whereas before we may have had to use more intrusive means, whether those were, were blood draws or imaging or some, some other, um, some other tests that, that we had run inside of a hospital or inside of a clinic. So this opens entirely new areas of research that are really going to be driven by data, by analytics, you know, by AI practitioners, um, it's an area that I think is going to be really exciting to watch over the coming years. Yeah, absolutely. And it's incredible how much change and advancements there's been in technology, especially in healthcare. And another major field in the healthcare industry where that they've really adopted AI is um, clinical trials and also just drug development. And so in what ways has AI really impacted this area as well? Yeah, it, I think that it's it's really across all kinds of uh, multiple dimensions, right? Um, first, AI is opening entirely new opportunities within drug discovery. Uh, you know, it allows us to essentially better understand and explore mechanisms of action, different compounds, and really understand much more deeply disease that allows us to come up to 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 develop new treatments uh, for patients. Uh, but it also has allowed advancements in several other areas. Certainly it's allowed us to now work towards synthesizing more data. So essentially, can we um, do more in silico work that allows you know, really us to dramatically reduce the burden on the patient, but also allows us to really focus on bringing treatments to patients, not including them in control arms. Um, this is a huge advancement in our industry, especially 
um, in diseases where the standard of care is simply not, uh, not the ideal experience for the patient and has not historically yielded the best outcomes. Uh, the opportunity that we have now to do more of that essentially through algorithms and through analytics analytics of data uh, really overall gives us an entirely new hope and new opportunity for patients. Yeah, absolutely. And I know throughout this podcast, we've talked a lot about the current state of um, just AI and clinical data. And so I wanted to also get your perspective on what the future of that looks like from, from your perspective. How do you think AI re will really be impacting the healthcare industry? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, right? And I know, you know, as we um, we work through the pandemic and, and a lot of folks talk about, you know, when we get, get to go back to normal, this is a space where we don't intend to ever go back. You know, we want the speed of which we've been able to operate to become the norm, not the exception. Um, and that's an, an area that will for sure continue. Uh, the insights that we've got have helped us make much better decisions and to make them much faster. And no one is interested in, in going back to a time where that was, that was much more difficult. Um, the other areas is certainly on how we better engage patients. Patients are such an important part of the overall clinical development ecosystem and really life sciences and healthcare more broadly. And they're beginning to, to really take a, a very active role um, in their care. And through AI, through data, through analytics, we're able to provide a much better insight into you know, what is actually happening within the course of a clinical trial or even outside of that, something that a lot of patients are really, really asking for and can only help support you know, their individual journeys. The vision that we all have is towards this, um, the era of precision medicine, where we're really targeting um, specifically unique characteristics of an individual that help us tailor treatment or even develop unique treatments for that phenotype or, um, or other specifics of the patient that make it uniquely, um, uniquely work for them. That's where we're headed. And that is becoming more and more of a reality every day, um, not just as we develop you know, new algorithms and we had developed new ways of working, but also as we collect much more data about disease and about patients. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great perspective on kind of the future outlook of everything there. And I wanted to say thank you so much, Tom, for joining me today on the Data Standard Podcast. We're always trying to build a community where everyone can come together and be able to network and collaborate with each other. So is there anything that we can do for you? Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Catherine. And I think, you know, the biggest thing that I would always ask people is be curious. This is a space and, and uh, data science broadly is a space that is advanced by curiosity and advanced by exploration. I would challenge all of our listeners to think about the role that they can play in that in advancing our practice, but also getting involved in life sciences. Be part of something really big. We're at a moment where we really have an opportunity to fundamentally set off in a better direction in the future in terms of you know, new treatments and new outcomes and better outcomes for patients. And all of your listeners have an opportunity to be a part of that. And so I challenge them, had they not thought about it before, to think about it, get involved and be curious about the space. Yeah, I think that's some great advice as well for everyone to really um, take from our audience. So thank you so much. And is there anywhere that people can connect with you online? Yes, and if they are interested in talking about it more, please look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, also, uh, we, you can follow our blog at Geek Stock Talk Clinical on the metadata website. Uh, but also, if you are really looking for how you can get involved, I would encourage all your listeners to explore the metadata.com slash careers page and find out what opportunities are out there. This is a very, very fast growing space and a unique opportunity in our time for, for big thinkers to, to be involved and to help us develop what those you know, new solutions are for the future. Yeah, that's fantastic. And to our audience, for more information on the data standard, you can find us at www.datastandard.io, as well as on our LinkedIn and YouTube channel. And thank you so much, Tom, for joining me and just sharing your perspective on just the outlook of healthcare with um, artificial intelligence. So thank you so much. Thank you.